Hello and welcome back to yes another Arm with 3D tutorial. Now today I want to show you how to uh, deal with this enemy AI sort of following mechanism whereas the enemy in this in this case this boat right in front of me is going to be able to follow me all over wherever I go and it's going to chase me down and uh, yeah that is what we need to do. So to do that first of all we need to define where the enemy can go we got to make a map that the computer can read and define where the enemy uh, can go and where it can't go. In this case we can go anywhere all around the water but we can't go past it, we can't go on this landmass around this. So what we need to do is we need to make a nav mesh. Now a nav mesh is essentially, well, just a map. A map where the player can go or the object, the game object can go and where it can't go. So let's go in to select the island, this landmass, this mesh and add a new bundled node. Now this is going to be the nav mesh right here and this is going to define where the enemy can go or wh where the map is, what encompasses the map and what excludes uh, the lo as where the player can go and where it can't. Okay, <laughs> So for the max slope height this is the main important value right now because we have a slope where we don't want the enemy to go so we don't want to include that into the map, into the nav mesh. So we can set this to be a value of 0 0.5, something like that. A very slight slope. And now we have a bunch of default values and we can just generate and see what that looks like. And as you can see we have this white mesh generated. Now this won't appear in your render, it's just to tell you that this is where what the map encompasses. And as you can see, it's got done a pretty good job. It's got all of the water and it doesn't have any of the islands, any of this uh, landmass right here. So yeah, I think that is a pretty good job. So what we can do is we can just leave it as is and just press H on your keyboard to hide it. Now like I said, it is still here we just can't see it and it won't show up in our render anyway so it's not really important. Now we need the enemy right here. We need it to follow our uh, player using the nav mesh, using the nav mesh's restrictions and yeah to do that we need to say to the actual computer that we do want this object to be able to read this map, to be able to follow the map's rules. So we're going to set it as a nav agent. Now we do have some properties here such as the speed and the turnaround duration. The turnaround duration is literally just the time it takes for the boat to turn around. So you can set these as default but I'm going to just set the speed to 2 because it don't want, we don't want it to run down the player faster than the player can move. Now what we want to do is we want to make a node tree just to define, uh, to make the um, actual enemy follow the player. So we can call this node tree follow. We can open it up in our no in our logic editor and we can go and get a on update node. But we don't actually need to update this a player's uh, location every single frame. That might be a bit excessive. Instead let's just use a timer node. Now if we set this to like 0 0.2 then it will update uh, not every single frame but every two frames. Uh, you can set this more depending on how slow you want the play, or how um, efficient you want it to be. But to save on uh, PC uh, memory space and all that, let's just set it to uh, 0 0.2 to double the amount of efficiency you can e extract from your PC running the program. If that makes any sense. Uh, so what we can do now is we need to get the nav meshes go to location node and that is obviously going to set the pl the enemy to the location of uh, wherever we're going to define the location to be and now to actually define where the location is going to be for it to go to we got to get the, en the uh, player's position and we need to actually just get transform of the object. Now the object in question is going to be the boat. In fact let's just get the get location of the object because that's better it's a better node. We can get the object's location and the object in question is going to be the boat. Yeah that's better. 
and now when we actually run this project you should see that the boat is constantly following the player wherever the player goes. And as you can see we now have a split a spaceship. A ship that can now follow us and it's meant to be a ghost ship so I didn't add any collisions or anything. So it can just, you know, go through everything whereas we can't, we're forced by the laws of physics. And yeah, the ship is constantly following us, which is really great. Uh, so, thank you very much for watching, and uh, before you leave, there are 19 days left for the Army 3D Community Game Jam 2.0, and if you have a game that you're working on or something like that, you can upload it probably. Uh, it just has to be about the theme of famous, even if it's just a slight uh, uh, involvement in that theme, it doesn't really matter. We need as many projects as we can, so make sure to go check it out. And if you don't want to upload anything, then at least go check it out and see what other people have made. It can be a good inspiration, and there are also a lot of uh, links where you can get a lot of free stuff on there if you just want to check out some free stuff. Honestly, whatever you want to do, it's great. So thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.